So good morning, everyone, and thanks very much for joining us today on this very important event here at Ravensbourne, and thanks for the organization, thanks for arranging everything so well, and um, thanks for being uh, denim lovers, right? So uh, we are here, uh, the group of uh, good people uh, with me, to discuss different things, to tell you what is good about denim, also what is bad about denim today, what is possible to make better, and what is the future, and inspire you. So we want to inspire the designers and product developers on you know, how denim should be, uh, how denim is you know, a good article now, and how can it be better in the, in the future. So I'm the first speaker because I will introduce you on how denim is made, so how many steps are made. We all love denim, is right. We think it's cool. This morning, I, I went around, and I looked at the denim you were wearing, and none of you is wearing the same type of jeans. I mean, they are all different type of jeans. So if today you are 300 here, there are probably 300 different types of denim here. So it looks good, everything is fine, but it has to be done in a better way. And to, done it, to, do, it, to do it in a better way is to understand how it's made. So I hope that works. No, yes, here, that one. This chart that you see is, um, I feel like I'm trapped in this. <laughs> so this, this chart that you see is, uh, <clears throat> is um, was prepared at the Manchester University. They have a, a, a department on transport analysis, and it specifies uh, in a very graphic way how denim is made step by step. You don't have to count the steps, there are 24. And every step that you see has many sub-steps. So it's a kind of endless type of process. Just to give you an idea how, of how long it takes, from the moment that you have an idea until the garment is on, on the shops ready to be sold, can be up to 18 months. It's a long, long, long time, right? So it's not an easy uh, fabric garment to make. It's very complex, it's very complicated, and it's fascinating. So in here, we have, <laughs> again, you know what? I'll do it the Steve Jobs style. No, it's all right, it's all right. I just want to see the screen here. So um, it's a textile fabric. So we need a fiber. The fiber was cotton in the past. Even some bus fibers were used. But now, so there are other fibers that have been part of denim uh, for functional properties. And here I can mention, for example, polyester or elastomeric fibers. So they are expanding the way it's you know, made. They have been. Uh, let's say, added to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the scheme of making denim for you know, adding some properties, some things that were not possible with pure 100% cotton like, like this one. So first we need to grow the fiber, or we need to produce the fiber. Then we need to prepare the fiber for, you know, to be dyed. And for that we need, this is the one, to spin it so it's, a, you know, it's the form of, of a yarn. And then we did the, the more warping, because when we dye denim, Denim is not dyed as a fabric. This is a white back, uh, black um, back face in principle. So we dye the yarn. We dye yarns in different forms. We dye yarn on rope, what is called rope, groups of, uh, let's say, 400 ends, or what we call a slasher. That is open. Every end runs separately, one next to the other, through uh, the machines. And on this uh, amount of ends depends on the you know, construction style, the number of uh, how open is the structure and everything. And this can be from 4,000 to 4,600 ends going all in parallel on the, on the range. Then in the dyeing process here, this is the application of the dyeing. This is, by the way, if you have not seen a denim range, a denim dye range, this is how it looks like. And this is a, this is a small thing here, it's, a, it's actually a person. There are big, big ranges, I mean, they are long. They are long. If, if you run a trial of production, you become like a marathon man. I mean, you, you, you become very fit because you walk like 20 kilometers every day going up and down the range. It's, it's a massive thing. So in here, everything takes place. So first, the yarn is prepared for the dyeing. It's dyed with, uh, in this case, with indigo. Indigo is the king of the dyes. And, you know, it's so close to denim since the time that Mr. Levy Strauss decided to go for the, uh, let's say, batch 501, where they decided to introduce the first five pocket uh, jeans in the market. Otherwise, at that time, it was not jeans, it was just basically war wear. Then, at the end of the dyeing, we need to um, wash, 
We need to fix and we need to dry. Then, on the first step, we run the fabric. First, we cover it with a size because, you know, the, um, the weaving of, the, of, of fabrics is very stressing for the yarns. So the friction will cause like fluff, and this is not good. It will cause a hairy yarn, and it's, it's, not, it's not nice. I mean, hairy fabric is something. It's the indication of something has, has gone wrong. So we prepare this with the size. We cover the, the fiber. We make the fabric in the, in the looms. What you see here is actually a salvage denim. Salvage is, you will notice people wearing it like this. It's a red uh, stitch here. That indicates salvage. It's the way denim was for more than 100 years. Because the, the modern denim without you know, this salvage was introduced on the, on the 70s. So it's relatively modern. And then we have the finishing of the fabric. The fabric has to finish so it doesn't change the, the, um, the, the dimensions, doesn't shrink, doesn't move in different angles. And when we go to the garment, you know, it stays well as you designed at the beginning. So it's not twisting or anything like that. So on the garment making, Sorry, I have to step down. First, we have a lot of people that are teaching garments. They are huge units of people. Normally, they are ladies, and very young ladies, for little money. They are making your, our jeans. So it's something that, talking about the UN and everything, is something that, yeah, they are taking care of that, helping with programs and everything, because this, in one hand, gives a lot of jobs to uh, uh, people that otherwise wouldn't, wouldn't have any job, but at the same time, the working conditions might be terrible. Then we have the garment washed down. That's it. The way the, the garment, you know, the way the garment is treated to obtain the look that, again, you, as a designer, you have been thinking at the beginning how the denim should look like at the end. And finally, we have the finishing and the embellishment. So when you put the trims, or you do the brushing, or you do the dremels, or you do the kind of, of effect that it makes every jean, every jean is different, special. But OK, we are making denim. And uh, we need some things. And because it's an industrial activity and it's human activity, we release other things. So it's not a wonderful, clean process. I mean, denim is not um, you know, blooming from the ground. Oh, my denim is here, wonderful. No, it's something that is an industrial process that requires a lot of inputs and that generates a lot of outputs. So in the cotton fiber, we need land, a lot of land. We need water, we need a lot of water, and we need energy because the, all the equipment that it works on the, on, the, on the cotton fields are, you know, machines, are tractors and machines that they work on, on energy. And that generates residues, effluents, sometimes not nice, and pollutants, things that are going on the, waste, on the wastewater, on the streams that in principle should, shouldn't be there. I'm talking about cotton specifically. You will hear uh, on the next speakers about other, other fibers that also, you know, are also part of the denim world. Then we have the spinning. I mean, how to convert the cotton into a, a, a yarn, a fiber. We need water and we need energy for that. And we generate residues and we generate emissions. And if we go to the warping, I mean, preparing the yarn to be dyed to run through the denim range, we need water again and we need energy and we generate residues and we generate emissions. So. You take things and you release things. And what you're releasing are, is not a nice, wonderful um, you know, um, particles, uh, vapors of water. Uh, sometimes very heavy chemicals and nasty and sometimes dangerous substances. So when we die, the dying of, of um, uh, indigo yarn is, consists of three steps. So on one hand, we prepare the yarn to be dyed. So we pre-wet. On the pre-wet, what we do is immersing the yarn into a box that contains some chemicals for a kind of soaping. So we remove impurities, we remove uh, waxes and paraffins, things that may affect the, the, the performance of the dye stuff. So that's removed using water, that's removed using chemicals, and that's removed using energy. A lot of energy because there are that pre-wetting runs at high temperature, 90 degrees Celsius, 80, 90 degrees Celsius. Then we dye. We call it coloring because apart from dyes, dye stuffs, you can also color denim with other type of coloring things like pigments, for example. It's unusual, but it's possible. So I refer myself to the 
you know, we're putting color on, 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 on the wall by coloring more than dyeing, because it's dye stuffs and pigments. But here on the indigo, so we are dyeing, and then, of course, we need water. And we need a lot of water, because there are big ranges. And indigo is a type of dye stuff that, that will, Jacob will come with that afterwards. But it's not a dye stuff that automatically dyes the fiber. It's, it's, it's like painting the fiber. So that's the reason why the indigo goes on one box, and then another box, we call it boxes, and another box, because the indigo has to be painted layer by layer, little by little, one layer and one layer, until you obtain the optical depth that you're looking for. So that we need a lot of boxes, and we need a lot of water. And we need energy, because everything that moves in the industry is, is, is moving because of engines, uh, motors, and, and that requires energy. And that what generates this? Effluence, a lot of effluence. With pollutants, yes, a lot of pollutants. Jacob will come after that with that. And then that generates emissions because there are steams and things coming out. And then we have the washing out of fixation. Again, water, chemicals, and energy required. That generates that, you know, the same of this um, uh, column, effluence and emission pollutants. This, what you see here, is a diagram of how a denim range more or less is, is, is set up. The yarn is here, the pre-weighting is done here, the dyeing with all these, you know, skying, we call it the skyings, are here, and then we have a fixation, washing over, whatever. These uh, machines like this can be 200, up to 200, 250 uh, meters long. And this, you know, when they sky on the big ranges, it's like um, a three floors building. So it's, they're big things. Let's move on. Then, okay, we are preparing the, uh, the fabric. We are preparing this. So again, for the sizing, we use products, starch from different origins or different type of chemicals that we include on chemicals. Also, we need water. We need to dilute this into water and everything to apply that on the yarn. And we need energy because, sorry, we need energy because the process is done at, again, 80, 90 degrees. So high energy consumption. Remember that the process, and all processes, the one that requires more energy is heating. Whenever you have to heat something, it's high energy, very high energy. And then on the finishing, we run the fabric through, that, so through a range. And again, we need water. Surprise, surprise. We need chemicals. Surprise, surprise. And we need energy. No surprise. And then we generate effluent and emissions and pollutants again. Now we move to the garment, which Ali Chair and Sanjeev will, will, will speak about later on, where we need, en oh, sorry. Where we need energy. But in this case, there is a lot of labor involved, a lot of labor. A lot. I mean, the, the rooms of, of people, normally girls, stitching garments in some areas is, you know, is, is massive. There can be 5,000 ladies stitching things you know, for that. And, and not always in the, best, in the best conditions, believe me. It's, it's a hard job. Then we have the, the garment washdown, yeah, which is done uh, using water and we need energy. In some cases, even for more, very modern ways of, of washing down denim, we need our energy. When laser comes, and laser has been shown, uh, and most in video, this is energy. It's pure energy. So it requires energy. We require energy, again. And chemicals. And again, it's very labor intensive. So we need a lot of people to do things. One of the reasons why, and this is something that you can, you can uh, think for yourselves, is why a denim that is, you know, has a little drop of here, a little touch of something here, is more expensive than any other conventional rigid denim. Because this is done by hand in most cases. So it's done by someone that uses a small machine to zzzz, brush and that something. This is the embellishment, and the embellishment is handmade. And everything that is handmade is expensive. And then we have the garment finishing here, is when you put uh, you know, everything on for, for embellishment. And then when you do the final touch, when you make the ironing, when you put things on a bag, and when you ship this to the uh, end consumer. Everything generates here emissions and residues and pollutants. Yes, seems to be a dirty business, right? Actually, Patagonia, in one of the, the videos that they, uh, that they show for the collection, they, they claim that, well, they say that denim is filthy business. No, it's not filthy business. But it has to be done better. And we can do it better. You have to help to do things better. 
So let's move on. This is a, a, um, a summary of what you have seen. All these crosses is what is required for every single step. So I'm not going to go into uh, much detail. But you see, we need a lot of everything to make denim. So th there are other type of articles, shirting, uh, you know, other other things that require basically nothing. A t-shirt today, uh, 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 you know, for a t-shirt is nothing compared to making denim. A t-shirt is a relatively simple process. You put the knitwear, you die, you finish in the machine, and that's it. And you cut it, and that's it. Denim is a very extremely sophisticated article. Despite all this roughness, uh, war wear look, and everything, is extremely sophisticated. As example of you know, what denim involves is the water. It's, <laughs> it's my, almost my last presentation. And then this is what we consume compared to beef and leather and all that, which is under pressure. So um, let's say we are, you know, there are voices claiming that we have to all become vegan and all that. Maybe it's not a bad idea, because looking at this, really, I mean, I, I feel like becoming vegan, like my daughter. Uh, and then, OK, denim is here. We consume a lot of water. So this is my last slide now, is denim is glamorous. You will see whomever, Beyoncé or that, wearing denim. And it, it looks wonderful, and it's perfect, and it's nice, but you know, these are Greenpeace pictures. It, involves, it still involves things like this. Dirty waters, child labor, people, you know, uh, exposed to extremely dangerous products, and a lot of residues. So, for you, my message today is, you are responsible of creativity. You have to create. But, in the case of denim, creativity is not possible without sustainability. So when you start thinking about a new design, a new something, First of all, think, how am, I going to make, how am I going to make it sustainable? What type of fibers, what type of process, what everything is required to make it better? And the thing is that you have a lot of people sitting here that is ready to help you on this. Because the future of denim, the better denim, is, is actually depending on you. So thanks very much. That was all. Thank Mosin. You. Yeah, thank you so and so now, much, guys. Um, Time for Let's the next see if speaker. this mic is working. If, has any of you guys got any questions for like for like sort of like Miguel? Obviously, his deep deep knowledge in garment production and weaving and everything. No, anyone, anyone, anyone? It's the time uh, to ask. And any time, if I can send break, the mic to someone. If you want to ask me anything, just just let me know. You all right. Put your hands up. I can do. Anyone's hands going up? No, no, they're all a bit shy at the moment. Moving on. So thank anyway, you. moving on. Thank you so so much for your time. Thank you, thank you. So our next speaker is um, someone who's, who's actually become a personal friend of ours, actually. We've been obviously working on the project for o over a year with him, and it's, and it's Michael uh, uh, Kenenmont from Lensing. He's the Global Development Manager. So welcome on, on the stage, Michael. Uh -huh.